Hello everybody, Scoop It Up here, and today I'm going to be going through Bluestone, my Redstone computer in Minecraft. So I'm going to be giving kind of a overview of the computer, um, showing you guys all the various functions and what it can do. Uh, and in a later video, I'm going to be showing you guys a demo program that I have that will draw a line on a display between any two XY coordinates. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, the computer runs on a 12 clock, meaning it has a period of 24 ticks or 2.4 seconds. Um, and it's capable of doing five different commands per clock tick. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, without the use of any instant wire, that is the fastest uh, speed of any Minecraft computer that uh, is documented at least. So yeah, it's pretty fast. It uses a go-to logic system, conditional go-to logic, to select what line of code to go to. So here, the red and pink section of the program memory, it's color-coded program memory, 63 lines of it, and that's a total of 3.1 kilobits. So the red and the pink sections, it's all color-coded, um, will show the red shows what line of code to go to if the condition is false and the pink is what line to go to if the condition is true and based on a condition 15 different conditions it's a 4-bit address which is here this orange section I can select what uh, condition I want to look at for my go to system so the way it works is over here I have a multiplexer and basically it takes the two values, the two uh, lines, the uh, false and the true value and based on whether or not this is on or not it'll select what line to go to um, and then when the clock ticks these basal flops uh, pulse, they're D flip flops and they will send the new line of code to the decoder and then to the line of code selected. So this condition right here comes from that 4-bit address, that orange part, and that's over here. So it's a 4-bit decoder and it has 15 different inputs all along this line and based on what address is selected it'll either send a 0 or a 1 to the condition. So these different conditions uh, have a, lar a wide range of different um, different things. There is four Boolean uh, switches so I can turn a essentially an RS Norlatch on or off using the program and that can be used in the program as uh, as like a condition, a, a kind of logic function. Um, a true or false value in programming. Uh, then there's also like the comparator. I can compare t the two numbers in the ALU whether or not A is greater than B, less than B, or equal to B. Um, there's also a uh, four different user inputs, uh, just T flip-flops uh, connected to buttons, so I can use that to interact with the computer. Uh, as well as random branching, whether or not the random number generator is, is on. Yes, it has a random number generator. And also shift overflow or shift underflow. So I'll be getting to those uh, conditions a little bit later. Um, so the ALU, it's, uh, it can compute all Boolean functions, so AND, OR, XOR, IMPLES, all of those, as well as adding, subtracting, and bit shifting, it can shift left, it can shift right, and it can also set, uh, when you're shifting le uh, left, it can set the least significant bit to a 0 or to a 1. And that's actually useful for division algorithms. So I'm uh, in the process of writing a program that requires division, and so I decided to add this in just to kind of speed up the computer a little bit. Uh, another thing for division that I decided to do uh, to speed the computer up is this circuit right here. Uh, it actually counts how many bits long the data coming into the ALU is. So if let's say we have the number 31, well in binary 31 can be represented using only 5 bits. It doesn't require the entire 8-bit 
um, data input that this computer is capable of. So I can uh, send a binary output to RAM of how many bits long the number is. Uh, and that's useful for when you're doing stuff like left justifying a number, which is uh, essential when you're dividing. This here, as I said before, is the random number generator. It basically just uses clocks that are on completely different delays. And based on when you um, turn it on and when the computer selects uh, or accesses the random number generator, it uh, is essentially random because you're turning it on at a separate time for when the computer is accessing it. Uh, and that's what gives it the kind of random ac uh, random um, random feel. It, it's not completely random, um, but it's as random as I need to have it. Um, this computer is equipped with a serial in and serial out system and that's almost kind of like a USB on your computer. So using only one wire um, I can send data through one wire to external devices. So for instance if I wanted to connect a larger display, if I'm not satisfied with this display which is 16 by 16, I can connect a 32 by 32 screen and in fact I do in my demo program which I'll be showing a little bit later in a later video. Um, I can send data from the computer through one wire to the display. Uh, not only that, but I can use it for RAM. I can connect external RAM to this and send the data back in. There is a serial in, two serial in, and 16, uh, well, fif sorry, 15 serial out. Um, and I can also do it with math processors. So, for instance, if I wanted a square root extractor, rather than creating an algorithm and wasting a lot of program memory and having it really slow, I can make a math processor which you input a number and it'll give the computer back a result. So for instance you could give it the number 100 and it'll compute, it'll take the square root and give you back 10. Uh, and that would happen a lot faster than what the computer could actually do because it's designed for it. Um, as I said earlier I have Boolean logic. So this purple section here um, well, this purple and light blue is not is used for both the serial communication as well as Boolean logic and indicators that I have uh, for the user to look at and uh, just general indicators for a program. So if you if the program is waiting for you, it'll turn an indicator on. So using these um, selections, and th this is kind of just a selection whether you want to use it for serial or for Boolean. This is for serial or for the indicator. Um, it'll send data to these RS NOR latches here, which are connected to the conditional go to. And it will tell the computer whether or not it's selected as true or as false. And that's useful, very useful for programs. Uh, when you're doing complicated programs such as a line algorithm, when you're drawing a line between two points, I actually use all four of these. Um, it's very useful. Then a similar uh, concept is over here. It's actually very similar uh, for the indicator, except instead of sending the data to the conditional go to, it just sends it to this to these four uh, redstone lamps, and that's indicator one through four. Um, yeah, so this is the serial out system. It's one tick per bit, um, and it sends it through uh, this kind of general address selector, and based on which 4-bit address is on, it'll send it to whatever I want, and I can input what address I want to send it to using the program memory. And then the serial in comes over here into these. Uh, these are serial to parallel converters and that output uh, is then sent to the general bus and to RAM. So the RAM on this computer is dual read. There's 15 addresses um, and it's 8-bit, obviously it's an 8-bit computer. Um, by dual read I mean I have uh, a separate decoder for read A and read B so I can actually read two numbers at the same time. So if I wanted to load RAM 7 and load RAM 8 at the same time and save it to the ALU, let's say I want to add uh, the value in RAM 7 and the value in RAM 8, I can access that number at the same time through this bus and send it to the ALU 
output or save it in the register and compute it and then save it back to save the result back to RAM. So th that makes it very very fast. And this the same in the same way I can um, read an X and a Y coordinate at the same time and save it to my graphics card and draw that point at the same time. So I can load from RAM, save to the graphics card and draw that point all in one clock tick. Uh, and that's what just makes this computer so fast because while that's happening I can be outputting the next point and the next point and the next point so I can draw stuff very very fast. Um, so let's just get into the kind of user interface here that I have. Um, this here is my um, my user input for data. Uh, I can input a number You're just using T flip flops. Let's say I want to input the number 5 in binary and this is saved to user input 2. I can flick this lever and access user input one on the same uh, selection screen which is very convenient so now I can input let's say this number which is um, 20 and then go back to 5 go back to 20 and vice versa and this just uses some multiplexers it's pretty cool uh, and that sends the data this bus sends that data to the uh, main bus uh, register and then into RAM from there. Um, what else? The graphics card. So the screen that I have equipped here, um, you may notice it's very big. There is a reason why it's so big and it's not um, one of the smaller screens that we've been accustomed to seeing now in Minecraft. What I can actually do is I can save and clear not only pixels at the same time, but I can save and clear like selections at the same time. So I can select an area between two diagonal coordinates and I can actually clear or I can save those selections at the same time. So there's four different um, registers for the graphics card. There's clear, uh, clear A, clear B, save or draw A and draw B. And those go to these kind of rendering um, uh, rendering circuits that I have that basically fill in between x coordinates. So if I were to input, let's say, this coordinate here and this coordinate here, um, I could actually, using a built-in function, select all of the x coordinates in between those two. And that's how I achieve like a selection. Um, I can I can create a selection. I can input this point, this point, and uh, using the functions, I can draw all of the x values and all of the y values in between those two points. Um, now, one of the benefits of having uh, saving and clearing at the same time is that if you wanted to, say, move a pixel, rather than clearing the entire screen or clearing that individual pixel and then the next clock tick saving the pixel, um, which you would have kind of a, a delay in between not having a pixel and having a pixel, I can actually, at the same time, um, move a pixel so I can clear at the same time as I'm saving so it looks like the pixel just moves or it looks as though the, the, the screen just goes fluid if I wanted to have a snake move for instance I could program it to run from the game snake I could have the end pixel disappear just as the beginning uh, the, the beginning pixel appear and it looks as though the snake just moved uh, one one pixel or one uh, unit I guess you could say um, Another thing um, is the um, register that I have here for a binary display. So from the RAM, I can either save the data to the ALU, to the GPU, or to the serial slash display. Um, this is just on like the A RAM uh, load, and this is on the B RAM load. And I can load a number into this binary display and that's part of the user input. Then here I have like an automatic uh, display clear on shutdown switch so if I have this selected it'll automatically clear the screen when the computer shuts down and the computer can shut down through program basically just by setting the line to go to to zero it'll actually shut down the computer or I can manually reset clear display and the same thing uh, applies for RAM and the boolean functions. I can clear the entire RAM and clear the boolean functions, or I can do it automatically on shutdown, which I currently have selected. Um, so yeah, this is the logic input, 
this is an option to use this D-pad that I have set up here so I can uh, use left, right, up, down instead of these four buttons just by flicking the switch. And then here I have on, it turns the computer on and starts running whatever program I have in it. Sleep basically just stops the clock so you can exit Minecraft. You never want to exit Minecraft while the computer is on. As soon as redstone goes into unloaded chunks, it kind of freezes all, all moving redstone and it will break the computer. So when you shut off uh, or when you leave the Minecraft, you have to put, either put it to sleep or turn it off. Turning off will actually clear the entire computer. I guess I just pressed sleep, so I have to turn it off. I have a little uh, flashing indicator for sleep, so when it is in sleep, I know by this flashing light. Um, yeah. Random number generator on or off. Uh, and that, I mean, self-explanatory, turns the random number generator on or off. This displays what line of program I'm currently on. And this is some debugging tools. So I can put it in debug mode. It'll clear the computer. Um, like, it'll reset the computer. And then I can reset the line zero, manual clock tick, start with delay. And that's good when you're debugging programs. Um, and yeah, I think that's just about everything. So the next video that I make is going to outline the demo program that I have set up for the computer. And uh, yeah, it should be cool. Um, I'm providing a download in the description for the computer. It uh, is currently not programmed to do anything, uh, or at least in the description, so you can just really fly around and see things. But in my next video, I'm going to be showing you the demo program and providing a link with the demo program already installed, so you can kind of play around with it. So yeah, thank you for watching, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks. Bye.